Good morning, Liberty. It is Monday morning, January 21st, 2019. Martin Luther King Day. Uh, if you are having the day off, I hope you're enjoying the long weekend. Uh, if you're at work like me, I hope you're having a good Monday, a good start to the week, and you had a wonderful weekend. I appreciate you joining me here today. My name is Michael Bolden. It is 9.30 a.m. Pacific time here on the West Coast, where I broadcast from downtown Los Angeles in my home office and studio here uh, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9.30 a.m. Pacific time. Today, I want to do a follow-up, probably not as long of a show as I've been doing recently, but a follow-up to a show that I did late November on Stingray surveillance. And I'm not going to go into all the details on what Stingrays are, which are technically a brand name for a device called a cell site simulator. And then uh, I want to talk about uh, just a couple of other things that we've un uncovered since then. And then, of course, a number of states, if you look at the title of the, the, uh, of the post here today on YouTube, Eight states are now considering legislation to take on these unconstitutional uh, surveillance tools. Uh, so I, we're going to cover all that today. But before getting to that, I do want to say hi to everybody who's here out in the live chat on YouTube. I appreciate you being here. EHP Training, Tyler and Larry Clark and everyone else, whether you're watching live or later on in the archives on any of our other channels, whether it's BitChute, Keyport, uh, dot TV, BitTube, or through our podcast audio-only versions on iTunes, Google Play, and Spotify. I really appreciate you spending some time with me. And of course, and hi to uh, Bob Brewer down in Tyler, Texas as well. Appreciate you being here. And of course, as EHP Training mentioned in the live chat, I am smashing, young man. So make sure if you are here and if you like this show, you find it interesting, smash the like button, whether you're watching it live or later on the archives. It really just tells the platform that you're viewing or listening. Uh, if you're leaving a review, for example, on iTunes, the more that you do these types of basic free things, the more that it tells those platforms to show this program to more people. So I really appreciate you all uh, doing that with me today. So let's go forward and take a look at what's going on. And just a reminder, we're talking about stingrays today. These are cell site simulators. These are devices that, you know, maybe around a foot long, six to eight inches deep, three to five inches high. It's just a little rectangle kind of electronic box. And what they do is they, uh, they spoof a cell phone tower. And they trick all of the phones in an area, in a given radius, into connecting first with the Stingray device. So then the Stingray device co collects all the information that the phone is sending, whether it's uh, location tracking, uh, sometimes communications, voice communications, text communications. It could even be stored data on the phone, depending on how the device works. And then it just passes. It's like a pass-through. It collects stuff dumps it all in to uh, save on a hard drive or something, and then passes the uh, the connection off to the cell tower. So everyone in that area is then being surveilled. So it's mass warrantless surveillance without knowing about it. Uh, their phones aren't interrupted. It happens in a, less than a blink of an eye. You don't realize that your connection is being tapped and monitored. And then all that data is generally stored and saved and then shared in huge databases. And then you be begin uh, building these profiles in government, monitoring where people have been, who they're talking to, uh, and, and on and on and on. So they're very dangerous devices. And uh, Mike Meharry, my good friend here at the Tenth Amendment Center, our communications director, he and I did a, a, a conversation recently through Facebook. Yes, I know we still use it. We can still reach people there. <laughs> Uh, but we are talking about this, and he took the position, and I agree with him, that it is impossible to use a Stingray device. We can just call it that rather than cell site simulator. We, it's impossible to use a Stingray device and then follow the Constitution at the same time because you can't just target one individual. By its very nature, you're sweeping up all the communications of everyone. You, the idea of under the Fourth Amendment or of similar clauses in state constitutions all around the country is that in order to spy on someone, to check on their person's, house, person's house's papers and effects, you need a warrant based on probable cause, de describing the person, the place, whatever is going to be seized, searched, etc., and by definition, a cell site simulator doesn't do that. It's just it 
it's not how it works. It doesn't target one individual. Now, if they came out with some kind of device where you could track the one person, and I'm sure that already exists, there's no need to do this mass warrantless surveillance. Now, most of these devices are operated by local law enforcement agencies, whether it's state police, local sheriff's departments, county sheriffs, or local PDs. So a lot of people then think, okay, the problem then is state and local government. Well, it is. I mean, government at all levels is a huge problem. But they get them oftentimes, if not all the time, through a grant from the Department of Justice, FBI, for example. The DOJ either hands out cash grants, like the JAG or Homeland Security grant, where then they are required to purchase only a certain amount of items, or they just give them the devices right off the bat. And then I'm going to cover a little bit in just a few minutes the idea that the only way that you can get this is through a non-disclosure agreement. Now, now you and I can't get this probably, maybe, uh, but for law enforcement people to use them, they have to sign a a non-disclosure agreement. For those of us who live in Los Angeles, an NDA is a very common term. You hear everyone who's an uh, we call them ma, model, actor, waiter. Everyone you meet is a model or an actor or an Instagram star. And so then the first thing you ask them is, oh, great, where do you wait tables at? I'll come see you. <laughs> so um, what happens then is, oh, man, where was I even going? NDAs, non-disclosure agreements. So you say that you're going to use this device or you're going to accept it, and then you're signing over your ability to talk over, talk about it. You can't say where you got it, how you use it, who gave you the money for it, uh, any details of it. And for Stingray devices, the NDAs are pretty detailed. And some people have told us, well, this is just another example of corporations running things because Harris Corporation, the manufacturer of the Stingray device, now Stingray is an old version of this. There are much newer ones and there are a couple of other companies that make them. But we can just, again, call them Stingrays. So Harris Corporation is then controlling the government at various levels because they're requiring everyone to sign an NDA with them. So we looked at this, and Baltimore is a great example of how these things ran amok uh, and became public uh, attention in, the, in recent years. So Mike Meharry dug up, dug up one of these NDAs, and we're going to get to the bottom of that. But before getting to that, I want to take a look at this uh, nice tool that the ACLU, I know some of you watching can't stand them. I know sometimes you'll see me tweeting about them and ripping on them, but when they do good things, they do good things, just like every organization. So let's get that out of the way. But I want to point to this excellent tool that the ACLU has uh, put together. And again, this and all the other links, well, (laughs) I do my best to uh, include the other links that I plan on talking about in the show notes here on YouTube. In fact, I already linked the previous episode on Stingray devices from right around Thanksgiving, November 26th, I think it was, 2018. That's in the show notes. And if you're watching on another platform or listening, we put all of our archive shows plus all the show notes with the links and the alternative platforms. So if you're watching on YouTube and you want to find out, oh, how do I find these guys on BitChute? Uh, just go to 10thamendmentcenter.com slash Liberty. 10thamendmentcenter.com slash Liberty, all spelled out. That'll take you to all of our archives of the show, which we've been doing since uh, middle of 2018. So let's go to this tool over at ACLU. They've put out this uh, little multimedia page called Stingray De- Tracking Devices. Who's got them? Again, a reminder. This is how uh, ACLU describes these devices. They say Stingrays, also known as cell site stimulators or MC catchers are invasive cell phone surveillance devices that mimic cell phone towers and send out signals to trick cell phones in an area into transmitting their locations and identifying information. When used to track a suspect's cell phone, they also gather information about the phones of countless bystanders who happen to be nearby. And that's the problem. Again, if you're trying to track one person and the way that you track that one person is that you track everybody, that's really problematic. In fact, people like James Otis, uh, James Otis Jr., Samuel Adams, they saw these types of general warrants. And in fact, uh, this became a rallying cry as so unconstitutional under the British Constitution the unwritten constitution, that it was worthy of a revolution. So here we are seeing it as part of day-to-day life these days. 
So uh, the ACLU actually has a really nice page on this, uh, just this quick overview of what they are, a reminder of what they are. But then they've also put together who has them. So you can kind of take a look and uh, now, mind you, these are shrouded in secrecy and it's slowly being uncovered who's using them. But a vast majority, they've got this map on here. It's a clickable map and you can see different things. So there's like we can see the areas where only state police are using them or as we're, we know that state police uses them. We know that local police, we know that local and state police, like, for example, here in California, down in Texas, Florida, Wisconsin, Michigan, elsewhere. Uh, you can tell they, they've got records of these things happening. But then most of the country, well, a lot of states, it's unknown. So here's how ACLU puts it. The ACLU has, and this is as of November 2018, so just a couple of months ago, the ACLU has identified 75 agencies in 27 states and the District of Columbia that own stingrays, but because many agencies continue to shroud their purchase and use of stingrays in secrecy, this map dramatically underrepresents the actual use of stingrays by law enforcement agencies nationwide. So if you recall, I did a show about automated license plate readers where I went through a lot of research that was uh, uncovered, FOIA requests by the uh, Electronic Frontier Foundation, EFF.org, and Muckrock. Of course, this is one of these links that I'm talking about that I did not think of including in the show notes. But if you're searching our shows and you want to find ALPR, Automated License Plate Reader, that's what the acronym stands for. They found that around 200 law enforcement agencies had uh, scanned 2.5 billion license plates over a two-year period. But this is just a small number of the law enforcement agencies of the country. That's one of the problems is all these technologies, especially when they're passed along from federal government to state and local through federal grant programs. And then if there is an NDA like Stingrays, which makes it even more secretive, and the data collected is used to create national databases, then it becomes even more difficult to find out who's using them. So kudos to the ACLU and EFF for doing a lot of work on this. So the NDA, this is one of the big things. Again, we hear from a lot of people, especially our friends in the left, who will say, oh, you know, we can't stand you guys. And I've heard this from many people. Oh, you guys are all anti-Obamacare and pro-gun. But, you know, we like what you do on surveillance and asset forfeiture. That's fine. You know, maybe uh, you'll come over and join us on the other issues. Maybe not. But uh, glad you're with us on surveillance. So many of our friends on the left, they tell us that the problem is less about government. And this is a corporate-driven thing, that Harris Corporation— uh, they're the ones in charge. They're the ones creating the problem because they've made this product and because they're evil capitalists and want to raise a lot of money. Mind you, this organization here, 10th Amendment Center, is not a nonprofit. We are not an IRS registered nonprofit. So those of you who donate or become members to 10thamendmentcenter.com slash members, if you want to join, there's the plug. Those of you who join, we are a proud capitalist, pro-capitalist, pro-profit organization. And we're not going to partner with the IRS under the risk of having my speech or any of our team members' speech or actions restricted because we have to follow some guidelines that uh, seem to be changing all the time. But that's a side note. So our friends on the left will tell us, you know, the problem here is the fact that Harris Corporation and these other corporations made this product that you can't follow the Constitution and use. So the only way they can make money and continue to be greedy capitalist pigs is by requiring these non-disclosure agreements. So they've, uh, they sell them, they make tons of money, and they're the problem. But this is another example of the socialist, uh, the, company mind, the company is always wrong and government is there to protect us from the bad corporation. They, they always seem to get that part backwards. Because if you take a look at this great example of the NDA that was released, it ended up becoming released, it was a, an exhibit in a court case, the NDA that was uh, sent and signed by the Baltimore Police Department. The text is really small, and I'm not able to use my highlighter extension, getliner.com, very easily in, uh, in PDF documents or on the, for example, this is on Document Cloud. It's like Scribd, for example. But let me just quick read this to you so we all understand the chain of events and the chain of command that's going on here. This is a letter uh, from the U.S. Department of Justice, July 13, 2011. 
And this is to the uh, commissioner and the state's attorney, the police commissioner for Baltimore at the time. I'm not sure if he's still Frederick Bealfield and Greg Bernstein, the state's attorney, Office of State's Attorney for Baltimore City. Dear Commissioner Bealfield and Mr. Bernstein, we've been advised by the Harris Corporation of the Baltimore Police Department's request to purchase certain wireless com- collection, wireless collection equipment, technology manufactured by Harris. Consistent with the conditions on the equipment authorization granted to Harris by the Federal Communications Commission, FCC, state and local law and agencies must coordinate with the FBI to complete this non-disclosure agreement prior to the acquisition and use of the equipment technology authorized by the FCC authorization. Short version, it's all the federal government that's driving this problem. Now, Harris Corporation is clearly willing to participate. And this is a great example of corporatism, not corporations running government, but it is a partnership. The the corporation is producing the product that violates our rights, but the control and the regulations and the rules are all coming from Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. told Harrison Corpor- Harris Corporation, you can't sell this to people unless you go by these guidelines. And one of the guidelines is work with the FDA, the, uh, the FBI. The FDA is another problematic uh, organization that shouldn't exist. But the work with the FBI to sign a non-disclosure agreement, probably because they knew, and this is my assumption now, they knew that the FBI was going to be providing grants or handing out the equipment to the local law enforcement agencies and then leaning on those law enforcement agencies to pass along all the data. What they do once they collect it, whatever the surveillance method, once they collect the data, they share that data through all a huge network called ISE, Information Sharing Environment. This was post-Patriot Act, part of the post-9-11. It's part of the Patriot Act governance that was set up. They share it through ISE and through uh, fusion centers. So the federal government loves it when local law enforcement does really granular surveillance because it all gets passed along to them. And then it gets passed along to all the other law enforcement agencies around the country as well that are participating in this, which is basically all of them. So the issue here, again, is Washington, D.C., Wanting, in my view, wanting state and local law enforcement to do to basically be like federal agents, to be as bad as Washington, D.C., providing them money and then working with a corporation to provide them the tools to do the stuff that we don't want them to do. A quick look over in the chat. I want to say hi to um, Bob again, Bob Brewer, who is really good on sending links out to people. Whatever issue is important to you, just Bob is a great example. He's really hustling all the time. Even when he and I don't see eye to eye in in like email communication, I appreciate the fact that he's continually reaching out and trying to work with groups in his area to push them in the direction that he believes in. And I think if we all take that kind of approach, it's very, very good uh, for liberty to decentralize and and work more locally. I also want to say hi to Denver Libertarian, Joseph Standridge, uh, Noah Rogers. This is a great comment. Nonprofits shouldn't exist. If you don't make a profit, you don't pay taxes, regardless of corporation type. Nonprofit status is the government picking favorites and adding government controls. That part there is really, really good. Uh, in fact, we have a, a short statement on our website that basically says, you know, w- you know, the IRS tells us that certain political activist organizations or or educational organizations. Uh, seem to be more important to the community than the rest of us. And why isn't your local grocer an important part of the community that's got nonprofit status from the IRS? So I agree that is one of the philosophical reasons why the Tenth Amendment Center never went for a nonprofit status. We we definitely are proud uh, for-profit organization here. So again, the issue is Washington, D.C. driving this type of surveillance. The local government and local law enforcement loving the, the cash grants and the money and all this partnership with the feds, happily uh, uh, making themselves subservient to Washington, D.C. to get all the tools, the toys, and the grant money. And so it's a really nefarious partnership. And of course, uh, the corporations like Harris Corporation that are happy to work alongside this and produce the tools that are needed to violate our rights. So again, back in the episode uh, in November that I linked in the show notes, you can get a little bit more details on Stingray devices, how they work and all that stuff. I I rambled for quite a while. But today I want to just review and quickly blast through a number of states that are uh, considering legislation to 
push back on this. There really are just a few ways to do it. One, and it's the most difficult, is to totally ban their use. As we see, a lot of a lot of states already have them, probably all. I'm assuming almost every major law enforcement agency in the country, every big city in every state is using them. And then I'm assuming many of the smaller ones are getting them as well. So it is difficult to fully ban them. But because they can't be used and also follow uh, the Constitution or state, federal or state Constitution, it's impossible. Uh, They just shouldn't exist. But... In many state governments, I personally believe, and and sometime I'll I'll have to actually connect the dots a little bit better, but from my experience in working on passing legislation or working to get legislation passed in the states for over a decade now, the number one opposition uh, point all the time is law enforcement lobby groups. Uh, They get tons of money uh, to continue participating in these uh, schemes that violate our liberty. So Law enforcement agencies that are already getting tons of grant money from the Department of Homeland Security, Department of Justice, FBI, whatever, they have a vested interest in selling this, the, the message that restricting them in any way will mean that terrorists are going to kill babies all around the neighborhood. And that's basically the type of message that you get in committee hearings from lobby uh, chairs of these law enforcement groups. Now, the individual law enforcement Uh, officers are probably, in many cases, totally unaware that this lobbying is going on behind the scenes. I don't know. I can't speak for all those people. But what I do see is the head of these, for example, the chiefs of police organization, the law enforcement groups, they always come out and lobby hard against these types of bills. So when you have all these law enforcement agencies that are already on board and getting all the cash, it's hard to actually get them to back down in their opposition. So the most difficult thing is to go for it all. Ban totally. And then the other two things that can be done, if you want to, I would say, start at that level, and then if you have to work back, work back a little bit. But now it depends. Again, I can't speak for what the best strategy is for every state. That's up for the people of each state and the legislators that are working on it. Other approaches are literally require a warrant based on probable cause. That seems pretty simple. And in fact, that would restrict their use almost completely. Uh, When you require a warrant based on probable cause, uh, unfortunately, the legal status of what that means in practice in the law is that there are, quote, exceptions. There are no exceptions to the Fourth Amendment like that, uh, but that's how it's applied in practice. So you will find if you require a warrant based on probable cause, you'd probably cut their use, in my view, probably 80 to 90 percent, which is great. And then the other thing that you can do is to restrict data sharing or uh, data retention, because once they collect the data, let's say they used a warrant and they collect the data, then you don't want them to build these permanent databases. I mean, it should only be kept if someone's convicted of a crime and they use it as evidence. But you can't keep it forever. And that the databases are what becomes so problematic. When it's easy to collect the data, it's easy to share the data. When they're easy to share the data, then it's easy for nefarious people to use that data in bad ways. So you wanted to have require them to destroy the data that they collect or incidental. They call it incidental. If they accidentally pick up some which we know is not, I mean, it's not accidental. By definition, they are going to pick up incidental data, even if they're targeting one person. It require, you want to require them to destroy it. So uh, thank you to Bob Brewer for the tip of $10. I'm very grateful for that financial support. It means a lot. Thank you very much. And then Tyler B. Uh, points out, federal power always grows. One theme I've picked up watching this channel now, I'm more aware of how to stop it here in Ohio. Awesome. Okay, awesome. That's my hope is that, you know, we're, In sharing these ideas, you can take ideas and run with it. And it's it's definitely got to be a grassroots team effort. Larry Clark points out federal grants shouldn't exist either. Oh, yeah. And most of the time they are for some really bad purposes. So with all that in mind, let's run through some of these bills again as a, a reminder. If you live in any of the states where I mentioned the legislation, you want to get the, the bill number and contact both your state senator and state representative asking them to either co-sponsor or support this bill. At this point, that's the step to take. There will be other steps in the future, but that's the step. You can call and or email. Call is better than email, but uh, do whatever works best for you. And if you don't live in one of these states, call your state representative and senator or email them with the bill that you like the most. I'm going to tell you it's the South Carolina bill. And send it to them and say, hey, I'd like to see this introduced in our state.
And that's that's a step we want to take. So first of all, South Carolina has the best one. Representative Todd Rutherford, uh, the uh, House minority leader in South Carolina, who's uh, in many ways economically totally the antithesis of everything that we believe in, but does file good legislation on issues related to uh, the drug war, uh, asset forfeiture and surveillance. So good work on this bill. House Bill 3368 fully bans the use of stingrays by law enforcement in South Carolina. And it also bans the here, let me just read this. H 3368 would prohibit South Carolina law enforcement agencies from purchasing cell site simulators and would require any department that currently uses or possesses such a device to discontinue its use and discard the technology. So this is really a hardcore bill, and this is the goal. So we're always thinking about Jefferson's strategy of shooting for the stars, but recognizing that we may have to take uh, smaller steps that are prudent for the situation. This is like the ultimate goal. They can't follow the Constitution and use these because they're a mass surveillance device. So Rutherford's bill says, if you're already using, if you don't have one, you can't get one. If you're already using one, you have to stop. And then on top of it, you're not selling it so other people can use it. Putting it back on the market, you have to destroy it. That's the best bill. House Bill 3368 in South Carolina. In Oregon, it requires a warrant based on probable cause in most situations. Senate Bill 563. It does allow for the use of a stingray. (laughs) This is interesting. I like that they put this in there. I wonder if they realize how absurd this is. But it says the proposed law would allow for the wireless use of a stingray only if the owner or user of an electronic communication device consents to the collection or use of personal electronic data or personal electronic metadata or under a judicially ex- recognized exception to the warrant requirement. So there's going to be some situations where they're just going to say, well, we don't need a warrant, but that's a different issue that we have to deal with later on or sooner sooner more than, rather than later but it definitely needs to be dealt with but in this situation uh, <laughs> let's say i give consent i am not but let's say i give consent for government to access my phone through a stingray will there be no point of then using the stingray so in a way this would say uh, like somewhere around 80 90% of all stingray use would totally be eliminated and that's senate bill 563 in oregon Down in Mississippi from uh, Republican Representative Steve Hopkins, House Bill 85 would require law enforcement agencies to get a warrant based on probable cause before deploying a stingray to obtain the location information, stored data, or transmitted data of a communications device in most situations. And then this is the interesting part. I think this is Mike Meharry did this report. He says, even under any exceptions to the warrant requirement, so if they say, oh, there's an emergency or whatever, uh, that the courts say that you can uh, go with this without the warrant or you can get a warrant within 48 hours, whatever, however they've twisted the Fourth Amendment on this. They've addressed this to some degree as well, which I think is positive. This is even under this judicially recognized exception, and I'm putting that in quotes here, air quotes, Police would have to apply for a warrant within 24 hours. That's better than never. If the warrant is denied, any data collected would have to be deleted. HB 85 would require law enforcement agencies to delete any information incidentally collected on persons not named in the warrant within 48 hours. This is very good. I would put this as a B level. Uh, Mississippi has a very good bill, House Bill 85. And then... In Maryland, where we looked at the uh, the non-disclosure agreement for Baltimore, there's still there's some legislators that have been working on this for quite a while, but there's a lot of pushback from law enforcement agencies in Maryland because they want to keep using these things. It is really a nasty business. But House Bill 37 would, re, uh, would require police to get a court order, not a warrant, but close, based on probable cause before deploying a stingray device. And then any incidentally gathered data would have to be destroyed within 10 days. This is, you know, C-ish. I mean, I'm grading on a curve and I'm just kind of going with a gut instinct. If I really sat back and looked at it and did a spreadsheet, maybe they'd all be worse other than the the South Carolina bill. I like the Mississippi one, too, though. In Florida, uh, State Senator Jeff Brandis 
who my good friends down in Florida work with a lot to get um, uh, get good legislation, and he seems to be willing to do that. Not maybe he, some of he, some of what he files is garbage, but I've seen a lot of good bills filed from him. Senate Bill Two Ten in Florida requires police. Now they've already restricted stingrays to some level. Now he's taking it to the next level. So in Florida, they've already had one step. So this is an example of how if you get something decent passed, you follow up. Sometimes you take what you can get. You get a little bit less government. If you get, if government as, is at a level of 15 out of a scale of 1 to 10, and you get it back to 9 or 7 or 6, and you dial it back, then you just keep working to dial it back more and more, and you chip away at it. That's what they've done to us for over 100 years. 150 years. Why not use their same strategy that's been so effective back to them? So SB 210 would require police to get a search warrant based on probable cause before acquiring real-time or historical GPS location, location data and before using any type of mobile tracking device in most situations. Adding location tracking to the warrant requirement would effectively and warrantless stingray use in, in Florida because police already are required to get a warrant before intercepting cell phone communications content. So they've already addressed the content. Now they're addressing the location data. I guess, you know, you cut back on them wanting to use text or voice, uh, collecting that data. Then all of a sudden they're saying, well, we'll just track where everyone is. So Senate Bill 210 in Florida is another piece of legislation to follow. Uh, over in New Mexico, sorry about my app being open, it's Senate Bill 199, which requires police to get a warrant or wiretap order before deploying a Stingray device, unless they have explicit permission of the owner or authorized possessor of the device, or if the device is lost or stolen. But again, uh, there's no need. If you, someone's given express permission or consent to do this, you don't need a Stingray. The Stingray is there because they're collecting information on people that they haven't been able to get already. And then the last one, that is Senate Bill 199 in New Mexico. The last one we don't have a report on yet. I just saw it over the weekend. It was filed a couple of days ago in Hawaii. So I haven't looked at it in, in full detail. Meharry is the guy who really is uh, top notch on these kind of more granular surveillance things. So I rely on him to research this quite a bit. Uh, but this is uh, Senate Bill 465 uh, that requires either informed consent, a warrant based on probable cause. That And I like that they actually included this text. It says, a warrant based on probable cause that describes with particularity the person, place, or thing to be searched or seized. So that's uh, really good stuff. So... Again, if you're in any of these states, you want to, and the links for all the legislation or our reports are in the show notes, both here on YouTube and then, of course, in our archives at 10th Amendment Center dot com slash Good Morning Liberty. Make sure to be courteous but firm when you say that you support the bill and you want your state senator and or state representative to co-sponsor or support. If you're in a state that's outside of that area, at least any that I've listed, make sure that you still make a phone call or send an email. Say, this is the type of legislation. I recommend that you just get the bill uh, from uh, Representative Rutherford in South Carolina. And for those of us who live in uh, liberal-leaning states like California, Rutherford's bill is excellent because he's the Democratic leader in the state house. And so you're not, if you're a libertarian, a, a tenther, you don't always find a lot of connection. I mean, I don't find connection with mainstream Republicans or Democrats, but I know a lot of people in the grassroots tell me, oh, I have a hard time talking to these progressive. I'm not going to call my state rep because he's a progressive nutcase. Well, let's set aside their economic socialist nutcase and point out to them, look, Rutherford, he's the head Democrat in the South Carolina House, and he's filing the most hardcore bill in the country on this. So it's a great example, and it will open the door for other people to do this. Let them think it's a Democrat issue or instead of a Republican. I don't care, as long as they, they work the legislation and stop these unconstitutional activities from happening, or at least set the foundation to do so. So I hope you found this all very interesting, insightful, educational, more important than anything. 
I know, as Tyler mentioned, uh, watching the show, getting some ideas on how to deal with government overreach in there. That is the most important thing to me. I hope you find this educational and informative. I hope you enjoy the chat. Uh, for those of you who are here, I'm very grateful for those of you who have been leaving comments, even if you're not, if you're watching, lurking in the background. Uh, that's cool, too. Make sure you smash that like button if you want to help me uh, spread the word about the show. Again, thanks to Bob Brewer for the tip in the in the super chat. That's really awesome. And uh, I'll be back again, as always, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9.30 a.m. Pacific time. I'll see you again in a couple of days. And thanks for watching. <laughs>